Does that work? All right. Thanks. Uh, let's see. Uh, what did I say? <laughs> Fortunately, I didn't say anything important for the first two minutes. No. What I said is we're going to be doing some JavaScript. We're going to look at the example we did last time, and we are going to uh, extend it to do um, like mouse over menus. Um, sometime next week, I'd like to um, people to showcase the stuff that they did. So maybe we'll take some time out in lab to do that. All right. Uh, let's look at the spoiler example that we had from last time. All right. Star is about, if you click on the display spoiler, we can see the spoiler text. <laughs> you ruined it for me. Yeah. 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 Those, those of you, <laughs> those of you the videos of this don't know how difficult it is for me to keep a straight face uh, because I constant barrage that's coming from my I Here's the example. And again, what we want to look at is we want to look at the um, recipe, the, the, the format that this happens in. And the basic idea, again, is first of all, the three technologies all perform their specific roles. The HTML is for the content. So all the content, all the text on this page, including the paragraph that's a spoiler, um, is in the HTML. So there's the HTML for all of that. Via the CSS, we choose what to show and what to hide. And in this case, we initially start out with the spoiler with no display, display of none, which again is different from visibility hidden in that it doesn't take up any space. All right. JavaScript then is the interactivity component of it, so that when we click on the button, it displays. And notice it displays, it's not like it gets a new copy of the page or anything. All, all the changes happen on the page itself. So we have an input type equals button. This is not a submit button. All right. If you're triggering JavaScript, you're going to be using a button um, as opposed to the form. We have a user event that we're trapping and we're handling. In this case, it's the on-click event. Uh, the typical events that you'll see on click, on mouse over, on mouse out, on key up as you're typing. Um, I did an Ajax example for my class that as you're typing in, it shows you a list of words and it narrows it down the more characters you type in. Um, and that's what gets the ball rolling. So when the user clicks the button, JavaScript is set in motion. The JavaScript really has two pieces. It has the JavaScript syntax itself. All right. In this case, we have an assignment statement where we say this equals that ends with a semicolon. We have on the left hand side of the equal sign a DOM expression. When I say a DOM expression, it's document object model. And what it relates to is it relates to a way of pointing to different things on the, on the page. We have to point to them, and when we point to them, then we can access and manipulate their attributes. So this portion of the JavaScript statement, document get element by ID, spoiler one, points at this paragraph. It, this JavaScript DOM expression finds the thing on the page that has an ID of spoiler one, which is this. All right. One of the reasons why it's important to make sure your IDs are unique. All right? You don't want it pointing to a couple different things. You want it to point to the one thing. 
Once we point to it, we can manipulate the attributes. And we can manipulate the attributes by referring to them the same way that they are referred to typically in the HTML and CSS. So for example, we want to change the display associated with the style of this element. So we say document get element by ID spoiler one dot style dot display equals block. All right. So in the style, change the display to block. Generally speaking, this is going to match this. The only exception is if you have a dash in it. So for example, if you had background color, background dash color. In JavaScript, you'd refer to it as background, no dash, but then a capital C for color. All right. We may or may not see examples of that uh, today, but just as an FYI. Everything else without dashes is just referred to by the same sort of name. A few things to notice. First of all, the, the two quotes that I'm using here. I use double quotes around the entire expression. And then within the double quotes, I use single quotes to designate particular values. It's tricky for some students, and I can give you some guidelines to follow, but when you put things in quotes and when you don't. You put things in quotes if they are not stored in a variable. We haven't talked about variables yet. If they're not part of the DOM, if they're not part of the um, standard JavaScript language. So in this case, document get element by ID, that's part of the DOM. So that's not in quotes. Spoiler, on the other hand, is a name. And it's not like we have a variable that contains the name spoiler. The name is precisely that, spoiler1. That's called a literal. All right? The value is literally those letters. So when we want a literal, we put quotes around it. And likewise, this is a specific value. It's not stored in a variable, so we put quotes around that. The other thing to keep in mind is that this is case sensitive. So if I were to go and do this, type in, whoops, dot with a capital D, and I would go to save this and run it, doesn't do anything. All right. Now you might notice the bottom of the screen, there's a little uh, yellow like cautionary mark which indicates it's an error. That's how Internet Explorer reports errors. And Internet Explorer typically doesn't do as good a job as some of the other browsers reporting errors. So that's one reason for using one of the other browsers and we'll show you how these errors come out. In the case of Internet Explorer, if I click on that, it tells me that there's an error. I can click on Show Details. And it kind of gives me an idea of what the problem is, all right, if you read between the lines. It says that document capital D is undefined, all right? Well, you might say, well, wait a minute, document's defined. Well, document with a lower D is defined. Document with, a, with an upper D, uppercase D, is not defined. So it kind of gave me a, a hint as to what was wrong. All right? Let's view the same page in another browser, and we'll see how to find errors. Because usually the errors are reported better in other browsers than IE. Pardon me? What does that supposed to mean? The errors are reported better? That you get more information about... I, oh, pardon me? Uh, oh, okay. Okay. All right. With Chrome, you can go to more tools and you can look at JavaScript Council. And... Well, in this case, I don't know which one gives you a better error. All right? This says type error, undefined is not a function. All right? If we click on it, it'll take us to that line of the code, I believe. And it does. 
And again, keep in mind that this is not a little human being reporting these errors. It's following a very mechanical process of scanning the line and processing it. And therefore, it reports the errors in terms that make sense to it, don't necessarily make sense to a person. So that is a tip. If you are getting, if, if you're not getting the results that you expect, look to see if there's a JavaScript error. And again, depending on the browser, IE shows the error. Um, I think IE is actually based on settings. In some cases, based on settings, it might not even show that error. Um, Chrome and, and Firefox have what's called a JavaScript console and you can display it. My suggestion would be, first of all, look and make sure that you're, if you are getting errors and what those errors say. All right? I have a lot of students, even in some of the more advanced web development classes, that like, this isn't working. It's like, well, did you check the JavaScript errors? It's like, oh, okay, I guess I didn't. Um, one thing I try to emphasize in all my classes is that Staring at your code and hoping that the air jumps out of the screen and smacks you across the face is probably the least effective, least efficient way of troubleshooting your code. Figure out a systematic approach. And that, I, in my opinion, that's one of the most valuable things I can do and what I try to do as a teacher is to teach you how to look at your code and figure out if something's wrong, what is wrong. All right? I can't possibly cover all the mistakes a person's going to make. All right? I can't cover every JavaScript example, but if you have a good set of troubleshooting tools, then if something isn't working, you can take a look at it and systematically figure out what's wrong, as opposed to like, well, I'll take a shot changing this. All right? In this case, even Firefox, at least it gives me an error and it tells me, like, that the problem is somewhere in this line. All right. Which is pretty obvious because that's the only JavaScript I have in this page, but nonetheless it gives me a clue as to what's wrong. Another kind of error you could have is you could make sure or you could make the the ID not match up. Let's say I type Spoiler 1-1 one, one, instead of spoiler 1. I go and run this. Still doesn't work. Still gives me an error. This one's a little cryptic. Object required. When you see an error like that about an object required or alternately that an object is null, what it's telling you is it's pointing to something that doesn't exist. Let's see the error that Chrome gives you. Cannot read property style of null. All right? Both those cases, what that's telling you is there's no such thing as this. All right? Notice it's not telling me that it's not a function or something like that. It's telling me it's trying to do something there, but there's no such thing as that. So that's sort of a clue that you probably have the name wrong. This is something that only comes with practice. So be sure to make plenty of mistakes as you're doing these so that you can get all the practice all out of the way. All right. Now, we can fairly easily turn this into a menu with a few tweaks. And again, the few tweaks are going to be related to all three categories, the HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript. All right. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and save this as menu.html. so I don't have to retype all those basic tags. And I'm going to go in 
and I'm going to make I'm going to make some menus. And I'm not going to like complete them. I'm just going to And I'm not going to really have a URL here. I'm just going to use the pound sign as a URL. And I'm going to do this with three menus. You can do it with three. You can do it with a hundred. I'm going to clone this menu three times. Okay, so we can imagine that being the URL, this being the main menu, this being the submenus, and that would be much like what we saw in the ESPN site. Where the main menu is across here, and as we put our mouse over the different things, we get a different submenu. All right, let's view this now. And again, I'm a firm believer in doing a little bit at a time. All right, I'm not going to try to do everything all at once. I'm going to do a piece at a time. When I get that to work, we're going to move on to the next piece. All right, so let's see if this looks right, just the HTML. And sure enough, it kind of does. I think, I'm, I think some of my tags are wrong because those bullet points look off. I don't know what I did wrong. I forgot to close my links. <coughs> this is one of those things that A couple seconds checking to make sure that it looks right is going to be worth uh, saving a lot of aggravation later on when something may not be working because you did not. That's what you do? <laughs> what did I miss? First one, option three. Okay, thank you. All right. All right, that looks better. All right, that looks better. All right, so we could do this in either order. We could do the on, we could, we could do the JavaScript first. In fact, let's go and do that. Let's change things up. It's the end of the semester. I'm feeling, you know, capricious. You know, I just want to, yeah, that's a good word. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I used it right. Yeah, really. I had a book when I was a senior in high school, and it was called Word Power Made Easy, and our, our teacher, our English teacher, had us use that, and I swear, that's like where 
other than like the basic words that like everyone knows, that's where like 75% of my vocabulary came from. So, it, you know, it's funny, like, you know, this teacher was really um, kind of a screwball, but she was a great teacher. Uh, she said like the first thing she did when she got a car is take it out on the highway, see how fast it would go, like with any, any car that she would get, you know. And she said she made it, yeah, right. She said she made it from somewhere in Lorraine to Oberlin in like 10 minutes or something like that, which is like flying, you know. So, but she was a great teacher. Uh, <laughs> fortunately, she was not a driving teacher. She also was very much into UFOs and was pretty sure that, pretty sure that, that folks were going to be coming to visit her sometime soon. I swear to God, but you know, she taught me a lot about writing. When I got to like college writing classes, it's like, wait, people don't know this? You know, I, I learned that as a senior, you know, and, and it, was, it was amazing. All right, anyhow, enough reminiscing. We're going to go and we're going to put the JavaScript in. And what I'm going to do, if we think about this, what I want to have happen is... When I put my mouse over one of these options, I want the respective other menu to show. All right? So, that's not going to be on click. I'm not going to do it when I click on the menu. It's going to be on mouse over. Well, I do have to put some CSS in here, right? I'm going to put some CSS to hide them all initially. And I could do that with three rules, menu 1A, menu 1B, but I'm going to do that with a class. So I'm going to go and I'm going to hide everything that has a class of submenu. Dot submenu. Display none. All right. The dot indicates this is a class. Class as opposed to an ID because there are more than one. There are several things that are submenus on my page. I'm using a descriptive term submenu because I'm describing what it is. I wouldn't want to say like hidden menu or something like that. Secret menu or, or, or something like that. Why? Because that's describing the appearance of it. I want to describe like why this is special. It's special because it's a submenu. I then, through my styling, show how I indicate that. I could write in another, um, in another um, version of this, I could make it where the submenus are always visible. But they're smaller or they're off to the side or whatever. All right. So, let's go and let's look at this. You get that error on Internet Explorer if you are using any JavaScript. And I had an on mouse over. All right, what did I do wrong? Did I forget to save it? Oh, duh. All right, there we go, and nothing is showing. All right, I'm going to put an on mouse over, and what I'm going to do is on mouse over this, what do I want to do? When, I'm, when my mouse is over the main menu option one, what do I want to do? Yeah, I want to make sure that 
menu 1A gets displayed. So on mouse over this, I'm going to say document get element by ID. I'm going to point to the thing on the page. What do you use to point? You use an ID. Style. I want to change something about the style of that guy. I want to change something about the display. Uh, the display attribute equals block. All right. Let me take a second to look at it. On mouse over document get element by ID menu one dot style dot display equals block. All right, and that looks correct. I'm still going to go and test this, right? Even though I'm just going to be copy and pasting, why copy and paste if code that doesn't work? All right, there we go. Now it stays there when I move my mouse out. All right. Pardon me? Well, That's a design question, I guess. Do I want this to happen or not? Um, probably not, because what happens when I do this to two and three? I'm going to have a whole bunch of menus up on the screen. So I go in. Uh, I actually placed it, pasted it in a different place, but it's okay. I just switched the order between the href and the on mouse over. That shouldn't matter. But yeah, the good catch. All right. So now as we put our mouse over these things, they stay there. Now, we have, that, that's probably not good, right? That sort of defeats the whole purpose of having these submenus. You might as well just always show them if that's going to be the case. Now, we have a couple of options for doing this, all right? And I don't know which one I want to do. Well, the, well we are going to do both of them. I'm just trying to figure out which one I want to do first. Um, yeah, but easy can be defined several ways. Uh, I am going to, as soon as I move my mouse out of it, I'm going to hide it again. Okay? So, and there's a little bit of foreshadowing here because I did hear someone say that there's a potential problem with this, and we'll see what that problem is. But this is good because this will show us another user event on mouse over there also is an on mouse out and here we want to do just the opposite play none And I can go in and change this. Now I put my mouse over this, that menu appears. But it goes away. That one appears, goes away, that one appears. Now what's the problem with this? Try clicking one of those. 
Click here to receive a check for $50,000. <laughs> no! All right. So, how are we going to fix this? And again, one way to fix it is the way that was described, that we keep it showing until they mouse over a different one. That's a different strategy. And we'll cover that next, either today or next time. But how do I fix this one? I could possibly do an on-click event where I could click to make it, uh, but I'm not sure I like that. And uh, I'm not sure that would work. Go ahead. I'm, I'm not sure what that would buy us. But then I, would have, then I would still have the potential of seeing all three of them at the same time, if I'm understanding you correct. All right. Well, again, then we're back to the strategy we said we're not going to do right now. All right. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to use a combination of CSS and JavaScript to fix this. We are going to put oops. I'm going to copy this on mouse over code over here. So that if our mouse is over that second unordered list, then we keep it showing. I don't think we're there yet, but we're moving in the right direction. Ah, I got an error. Object required, line 21. Character one. Oh. I forgot to close the quote here. As you all know, any mistake I make in class, I make it intentionally to teach you something. What did I teach you just then? I taught you that if you do your coding incrementally, that is, I don't write a gigantic chunk of code and run it and then wonder why it doesn't work. It was working two lines ago, right? It was working. And before I pasted that code in there. So it was working. I pasted a couple lines of code. It stopped working. Doesn't take Sherlock Holmes to figure out probably the lines that I just pasted in are the lines that are giving me grief. So instead of looking across however many lines are in this page, I look at the two lines that I just pasted and I was e easily able to see the fact that I forgot uh, an ending quote. All right? And again, if we would have uh, looked at the line number and all that, it would have pointed us in this direction as well. So that's another part of developing and troubleshooting, is don't try to do everything all at once. Do things in tiny little pieces, get it working, and then move on to the next thing. So. Let's look at this. We still have that problem because we have to take it out there before we get over to there. All right? So how are we going to fix this? We could fix it with CSS. We could fix this a couple different ways. Let me draw for a second. We could fix it so that 
Here's our main navigation and it's oriented horizontally. We then have our sub-navs appear, appear underneath it like this. So that as we go down here, there's no gap. And we go seamlessly from here to here. The other thing we could do, of course, is stack these horizontally. So that as we put our mouse over, there's no gap horizontally and we can move from there to there. So we could do either way. Now, I'm going to move these things to the LI. Just in case there's a, a, any padding or anything like that associated with this. I don't want there to be any gap between the one LI and the other. So, I could do this a couple different ways, obviously. Let's make first of all any UL on my page. <coughs> List stop type none. That's going to get rid of the bullet points. Could work. Any LI, I'm going to make the display inline. Let's see what that gives us. All right, there the menus are like that. Right off the bat, I see something's wrong with that guy. Got a quote again. Oh, I didn't forget the quote, I had it in the wrong place. All right. Now I put my mouse over that. I'm almost there, but there's a frustrating little gap. All right. Ah. Was that a convincing scream of frustration? <laughs> well, let's find out. Let's do a background of yellow. All right, my look, there's a gap between those things. All right, so therefore, when I'm in that little bit of a gap, it's gone. So, is it the padding? No. Why is it not the padding? Pardon me? Yeah, it would make more yellow. All right, so I could add padding to this all day. In fact, I probably would want to have some padding with this. Yeah. Well, keep in mind, I'm not going to keep the yellow in there. That's just debugging. But All right, so there it is. Doesn't affect the gap. Let's go and make it. I only made it two. No wonder I couldn't tell. 600. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. <laughs> Now, it actually fixed my problem, which I'm a little puzzled about. <laughs> All right, it fixed my problem because the padding now is so big that it's, it's causing them to overlap. All right, the idea here is that, um, you know, some combination of the border, um, margin, and padding usually do it. And I heard someone say something like, I just set all of them to zero. You know what? That's not a bad strategy. That's what I usually do too. And then if anything, I'll go and add back the things that I want to. All right? 
So I could do something like this. I could say, All right, then I get that. That's because of the that. And then I have that. All right. And then I would just continue doing that with... Uh, with uh, 2 and 3. Just put the same code in the other two. I'll leave that for you to finish up if you want to play around with this. So I'll post this example and then you can finish it if you want to. Now, all right, we had another suggestion of a way to do this. And I'm going to go and I'm going to copy this. We could make it so that the menu appears until I pick another one. All right? So how are we going to do that? Okay. Re repeat that. Yes. All right. So I can get rid of the on mouse out. All right? Because I'm not going to do anything when the mouse leaves the field. I'm only going to hide the ones when I go and select another one. So let's go and edit this. And we'll do that. Now I'm going to do this in a couple steps. We might be able, we'll probably finish the part one uh, today and then we'll finish part two. Uh, the second part, the refining of it on um, Thursday. All right. First of all, I'm going to get rid of all the mouse outs. I'm going to get rid of all of the mouse outs. So, not sure why the third one isn't displaying. We can take a look at that. Oh, I got rid of the on mouse over for the third one. Now, what we said is anytime someone puts the mouse over any of them, we want to hide all of them. Or at the very least, we want to hide the other two. All right? We could actually do either one. All right? I'm going to hide the other two. All right. Now, how do I go about doing that? I'm going to go in here and on mouse over, I'm going to copy this little line of code and I'm going to just say when my mouse is over the first one, I want to make
1B hidden and 1C hidden. For the second one, I want to make A and C hidden. And for the third one, I want to make A and B hidden. I could actually, in this case, also get rid of the on mouse over on this guy because it stays until I put my mouse over something else. All right, if I've done everything correct, there we go go and do my thing elsewhere on the page. It stays until I do that or until I do that. Okay, so far so good. What's the problem with this? Pardon me? It's a lot of work. Um, yeah, it is. It's a lot, especially if you think in terms of what would happen if something about this page changed. What would happen if we added a new submenu? If we had a new submenu, we would have to add it to all the HTML and all that. Well, that's to be expected. But I have to, I'd have to go and add to each JavaScript on mouse over to hide that one, to hide that one, to hide that one. And that could be a pain. The other thing is this code is ugly. Okay, so how do you hide them all? So what is the expression, the DOM expression, to give me everything from a, uh, of a subclass? Yeah, because one does, uh, if one does, you would have to then go and loop through all of them anyhow, and you have even uglier code. So it's a good thought, but it doesn't work that way. If we're using CSS on hover, then there's no need to even talk about the JavaScript way to do it. Yes, you were doing a good job at that, I will say. <laughs> at any rate, taking this approach, the problem is the code becomes hard to read. And the code becomes a pain to maintain. So every time we were to add a new menu, we would have to go in and do that. Any of you that have had other programming classes, what would your approach be for this in general terms? You have a block of code that you kind of want to do the same thing every time. Make it into a method or function. All right. So in other words, what's the difference between mousing over the first submenu and mousing over the second submenu? Nothing except the specific menu that we want to show. All the rest of the code is going to look identical. The only thing we have to do is we have to tell our and, gee, which one do I want to show this time? All right? Which one do I want to show this time? Then we can hide all of them. Then we might be able to do something, either by class or by tag, and loop through and hide some menus. All right? Or at the very least, if we, even if we hard-coded all the submenus, we'd only have to do it in one place. Okay, so that's what we'll do next time. We'll create a method to do this so that we can call the method and we're going to make our code more maintainable. Again, code this is not necessarily good code. code. Maybe you could describe it as adequate code. But there's so many other factors including the maintainability and probably especially the maintainability of it that really distinguishes between the code that merely works and the code that's actually good. Okay, so we'll look at this next time. See you up in lab. Well, you don't remember how to do it in this class because we haven't talked about it yet. You're, you're kind of forgiven for that.